Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We're joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 106, Equal Lookup versus At Lookup. Hey, this is a remnant from VLOOKUP week. If you remember, I, I showed VisiCalc uh, and that actually prompted an email from Dan Bricklin, Dan Bricklin, uh, the inventor or uh, co-inventor of uh, VisiCalc. Uh, and I then copied Mike Gervin in on my reply and in that reply, I complained because I always complain that that equal lookup, the Excel version of lookup is ambiguous and here's what I'm talking about. So we have California. I need to look up California in this list over here. So we do equal lookup, lookup California within this list. I'm using the array version uh, and that's it. I don't get to specify comma two comma false because lookup is always the true version and lookup always returns the uh, the last column in the range. Well, always. I don't even get to specify V to specify that the table is vertical. Uh, Excel just figures that out from the shape of the table and that means that lookup can also do uh, the, the equivalent of HLOOKUP, at least the true version of HLOOKUP. Uh, so it can look up that table and it just uh, decides on the shape of the table whether it's horizontal or vertical. Well, that's kind of a cool trick um, but what happens when the table is square? That's when it's ambiguous. Thanks, Mr. Excel. A ambiguous. Uh, it may be somewhat ambiguous, but I love the lookup function right here. This is great. So it's taller than it's wide. So we know it's going to do vertical lookup and I have to just enter the lookup value and the table and it's going to take it from the last column. Now, the most important thing about lookup is that it only does the approximate lookup or true version. So right, this has to be sorted. This one's great. Hey, it is sorted. Uh, and we know that if you can sort and use approximate match, it's faster calculating too. Uh, and this is great. You know, we're looking this up. It's horizontal. It's much wider than it is tall. But it does know what to do with the square. Anytime it's a square table like this, it'll do VLOOKUP. So, Taller than wide, our square does V lookup. Uh, wider than tall, it does H lookup. So equals lookup. And I love this. I have to just simply select that value and the table. No comma, column number, or whatever. Enter. Now, of course, this has to be sorted. All right, throw it back over to Mr. Excel. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Mike, I hear you. When it's square, it's not ambiguous. It treats it like a V lookup. But here's here's my problem. The one thing that I do really like about the lookup function is that it returns the last column. Let's say, all right. So uh, let me edit this formula. I'm going to make sure that this is always looking up dollar sign A3. So we're always reaching back to get the state in column A. And then I only want to freeze. I only want to freeze this first A. So it always starts looking in column A, but then the range will automatically expand as I go across. All right, so let's just try this. I'm going to make it go out here. See, we get all the, the values in yellow. If I choose a different state, um, now Ohio is pulling all of those values from Ohio. And I feel really good about this, right? Uh, but then as the month the months go on and I continue to get more data, paste some more data here. All right, and this concept continues to expand. Right now, uh, A through G is one, two, three, four, is seven columns by one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, seven rows tall. Uh, now, it all of a sudden stops working because at this point, I now have uh, I now have eight columns in seven rows, so it changes just on the fly to an H lookup instead of V lookup. That's what I mean by it's ambiguous. What? <laughs> that is amazing. You've got to be kidding me. Ambiguous. I can think of a lot worse words than ambiguous to describe that. So look up when you have an expandable range, once you get past the H, it just flat out switches over. Now, I, I've never seen that before. I, I guess. What it means is lookup has lots of great uses. 
but don't use it with an expandable range because, yeah, it'll switch right over. You know, we can use the lookup function to do this. We'll just use not the array version, lookup array. Not that we're not going to use this array. We'll use the lookup vector and the result vector, right? So the lookup vector, F4 to lock that, comma, and the result vector. We'll leave it as a relative cell reference and then copy it over. I love it. Look at that. All the way across, that little purple range is uh, moving. But yeah, um, ambiguous and lots of other words. <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw back over to Mr. Excel. Ah, but Mike, see, now I have newfound respect for VisiCalc, which invented lookup. I mean, actually, back in the days of VisiCalc, we literally only had 20 functions. So here's the VisiCalc reference card. We had sum, min, max, count, average, net present value, and then lookup, na, error, pi, absolute value, integer, and then a whole bunch of math things. Uh, exp, square root, ln, natural log, log 10, sine, arc sine, cosine, arc cosine, tan, and arc tangent um, were the only functions, only 20 functions. So uh, lookup was one of these original functions. And uh, Dan Bricklin mentioned that Bob Frankson wanted to look up in there so that way he could do his 1978 tax return. So here I have the 1978 tax rate schedules. Uh, remarkably, all this stuff is online. And I set up a VisiCalc spreadsheet that would let me do this. Now, there were three elements. It was uh, you owed a certain tax uh, plus a percentage of the amount over uh, the previous rate. Okay, So I've set up three different tables here uh, with the income, the marginal tax rate here, uh, then the income and the amount over, which is identical, and then uh, the income and then the actual tax. So let's run through how to set up the lookup uh, back here. So we'd use an at sign lookup, open parenthesis, and then what value do we want to look up? We want to look up cell B2, so I'd press the up arrow twice, comma, and then it wants to know where the table is. So I would come over here to the table, and see, I don't specify the whole table, I just specify the first column of the table. So it starts in K2, I press the period, and they take me back here to B4, and then I'll come over, and I'll use the down arrow key. All right, and now I'm done, so I do the closing parenthesis, and it will go do the true version of what we all know as uh, VLOOKUP today. But it was also cool in that it could do in essence, an H lookup. So here, this is looking up D9, and I specify A1 to C or A17 to C17, and then it returns the next row as the lookup table. All right. So in this case, uh, and when I did the Shark Week podcast a few weeks ago, where I showed VisiCalc, I specifically went with a two by two table because a two by two table uh, could only be treated as a VLOOKUP in Excel today. It could never be treated as an H lookup, but because Dan Pricklin and Bob Frankston uh, specified only the leftmost column or the top row, only that vector as a table, it was obvious then uh, it was not ambiguous whether it was a, in essence a vertical or a horizontal. Now it was Lotus 1, 2, 3 that, that said, hey, we have to have more columns here so that we don't have to have these three tables, uh, but then that forced them to specify either the V or the H. It wasn't obvious from the way that the uh, formula was set up. Unfortunately, uh, as time went by, lookup remained in the product and Excel now allows multiple columns and we run into that uh, ambiguous uh, expanding range that I ran into. Wow, Mr. Excel, I absolutely love seeing the history of lookup like that, the original the lookup function that Bricklin and Frankson created where there was just a single column or a single row. Uh, but unfortunate that it's still around? Oh, no, no. It's totally fortunate because the lookup function has some great uses, like looking up the last number in a column. You give it some big number and it finds the last one. Looking up a last text item, some big text item, and boom, it gets the last one. Even this one, look up the last thing, whether it's a number or 
text. Sure enough, it finds killer app. The first killer app, well, you know it was VisiCalc. All right, uh, that was so much fun. I can't wait to do it again. See you next duel.